Hi there everybody. Hope you are doing well. I welcome you to another video on this channel. My name is Devansh and I am the lead tutor at FinTutors. If you don't already know, FinTutors is a SEMA registered tuition provider and most recently won the Global Pass Rate Excellence Award. If you visit the SEMA website, you'll see only six other tuition providers in the entire world have this recognition. FinTutors is part of that group now, part of that esteemed group now, which further gives confidence to students that you're watching the right advice, you're watching the right videos, you're watching the right pre-seen analysis. So today's video, as you already may have figured out, is about the pre-seen analysis for the operational case study exam in November 2023 and February 2024. Throughout my entire pre-scene analysis, I am going to run you through word by word, part by part of the personal best pre-scene that SEMA has released. We will pick every single word, every single line and then relate it to our E1, P1 and F1 syllabus, making meaningful you know, references, linking it to your important syllabus areas and pointing out the top issues which can come up in the exam. All of this will help you develop a great background for your company. And secondly, it will give you ideas on what areas to actually study when you are doing your exam prep. So this pre-scene analysis is going to be very, very comprehensive. And very importantly, we have created a free mini course for you. This free mini course is packed with material. It's completely free. The link to the mini course is in the description below. So if you haven't already, please register for it. Just go to the description. You will find a link, click on it. It will take you to my mini course page where once you are signed up, you will have access to a whole bunch of material. It's a free mini course. Remember that you only have to click the link. It will give you access to my extra industry analysis, to my blueprint explanations, to mock writing tips. It will give you a mini mock with personalized feedback and a whole lot of bonus material. Guess what? It's absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. So try the mini course. The link is in the description below. You just have to click on it. And you, along with this pre-scene analysis, you'll get a whole bunch of free material that will definitely help you. And guess what? It's material which we have created with a whole lot of time, effort, and curated it in such a way that all of that material will be helpful for you, will be beneficial for you. It's coming from a registered tuition provider and somebody who holds the Global Pass Rate Excellence Award. So you have nothing to lose. Back to the pre-scene now and without wasting any time, let us begin. So the first thing that we deal with is your role. In the pre-scene analysis, they will always in the first page give us what you are expected of, what your job is within this fictional company. So in the operational case study, you are given the role of a finance officer who is working within the finance department of Personal Best. We already know the name of the company's Personal Best. And in the industry analysis, we have already seen the background of this industry, of this protein supplement manufacturing market. We already know that. So you have a very good start to this pre-scene because you have done the industry analysis with me. Now throughout the pre-scene, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight important words, important sentences or anything which I feel needs to be taken note of. And wherever there is relevance, we will relate it to your E1, P1 and F1 syllabus. Pointing out important syllabus areas, pointing out important areas which you have to revise, majorly ensuring that 
important issues important areas from your e p and f syllabus are picked up so over here i found the word finance officer as something that is relevant and when i find something relevant i will give you a text box on it like you can see on your screen just elaborating on that important word a little bit more for your understanding so step by step by step this way we will be analyzing the entire pre scene for you and my pre scene analysis is all that you need you don't need to do any extra research you won't have to do any extra you know reading or anything like that because we'll break everything down for you you'll just have to tune in watch it like a movie and absorb the learnings that we provide so first what is the role of a finance officer a finance officer often in business situations helps with costing variance analysis short term decision help preparing reports establishing budgets forecasts future cash flows now all of this if you think logically let's pick any one of the items over here let's pick working capital management it's part of your f1 syllabus let's pick costing part of your p1 syllabus establishing budgets and reading budgets part of your p1 syllabus so what is essentially trying to tell you is if you want to be a good finance officer who supports personal best who works to his full potential in personal best you will need knowledge of e1 p1 and f1 that is what i'm trying to prove to you so always i tell my students when i explain what this exam is i always tell my students three pillars the first pillar being the revision pillar second being the pre scene pillar and third being the mock writing pillar now if you haven't done your revision specifically of p1 how are you going to give costing uh, for example costing suggestions or working capital suggestions you don't have that knowledge so the place to start with is revision and they are clearly pointing that out to you in the first line itself telling you that your role is that of a finance officer and a finance officer deals with multiple roles which overlap with knowledge of e1 p1 and f1 so you are principally involved in the preparation of management accounting information providing information assist with planning control and decision making again if you have done your revision all of these words relate to your p1 syllabus control decision making costing planning management accounting all of these concepts are there in p1 so we know that p1 is the major foundation pillar of this exam if you want to do a good job in this exam p1 revision has to be to the point and yes i will highlight specific topics for you deeper into the pre scene but if you already done that revision it will make more sense to you so at times you are also expected to assist with the preparation of financial statements and answering queries regarding financial reporting there are no sums in this exam so you will majorly be asked with queries regarding financial reporting or you will be asked with interpretation but this is your f1 syllabus so for any case study exam it will be important to immerse yourself into the details of this company only then you can present good answers you have all the e1 p1 f1 knowledge but if you don't know your own company second pillar the pre scene pillar you don't know your own business how are you going to give answers which are relevant to your business so revision is important but side by side carefully studying the pre scene information or rather just listening to the explanations which i am giving as part of this pre scene analysis is very very important and this pre scene is not 
you know something that you'll go through once absolutely not you should go through the pre scene at least 10 times before the date of the exam so that you are not learning anything but you've gone through it so many times that you already have good ideas or good you can make good relations from the very very beginning that is why i make the pre scene in such a detailed way and i go through it with you in such a detailed way because it is important that's the first page your role i hope you've understood it next we are on company background a personal best is a company that manufactures and sells protein bars and protein powders so it's in the protein supplement market we already know what this market is the major trends because industry analysis has been completed if you haven't completed the industry analysis please go back and do it it's of great importance and it will give you very good insights so we manufacture and we sell so you are in both parts of the business not only manufacturing manufacturing as well as selling and protein bars protein powders are our major products so from this i know that we are a manufacturing organization so all your topics when you are doing your revision of e1 p1 and f1 when it's related to manufacturing for example you are doing your revision and you come across total quality management or just in time manufacturing you know that okay this is relevant because my company is a manufacturing organization so you'll revise in that way now when you are doing your revision always keep in mind that you are part of a manufacturing organization so when you do your e1 p1 and f1 revision don't be alien to this knowledge and naturally important topics we will be pointing out throughout the pre scene but again the point when i see something important i will bring it up it also means we manufacture and sell so it also means that we are a downward vertically integrated company which means you have access or you have not only the manufacturing side which needs to be looked at the selling side which needs to be looked at which you are part of which means you are manufacturing your protein bars protein powders and then selling it through various different channels this has various advantages such as you know customer information direct access to the customers direct access to your uh, retailers that you sell through and potential for understanding buying patterns and much more let us also keep in mind the strategic supply wheel supply chain management issues because you are also part of the selling you know zone which means supply where you supply where you are part of the uh, selling function needs to be kept in mind so how you are deciding your supply of protein bars protein powders how you are managing issues in that supply chain in the downward supply chain has to be looked at and this is part of your e1 syllabus so the products are in turn intended primarily as pre or post workout snacks for people who undertake a regular program of exercise so we are focusing on customers who are exercising regularly so this is the opportunity to focus on or create products that are aimed at a wider customer base like protein snacks uh, you know like you get those protein brownies or just a snacking protein bar supplements for maintaining regular protein levels this is an opportunity for us to expand our market by looking at these options as well because from the industry analysis we know that these are the aspects which are also gaining protein bars protein powders yes they are being consumed by people who exercise regularly but they are also gaining popularity in other parts of the customer base so remember your business focused on people who exercise regularly the company is based in sealand 
a country in Europe which has C dollars as its currency. So fictional company based in a fictional country of Sealand. But they are telling you that Sealand is a country in Europe. So let me think about the characteristics of Europe as a market. From the industry analysis, we already know that it has close to 7% growth. The protein supplement uh, market has good growth rates in Europe as well. So you are in the right place. Also, personal best is located in a developed economy. Europe is a developed economy. So it opens up advantages such as good infrastructure, highly skilled workforce being available, customers having good spending power because protein bars, protein powder is not cheap. We know that. So here we also need to take into consideration the high regulation, high factors of production. This is a health, this is a consumable product, right? So health and safety concerns will be very, very high. Same way, factors of production, if you want to buy land, machinery, it's going to be expensive. So let's keep this in mind that inherently I am in a country which has advantages of a developed economy, but it also has disadvantages which I need to keep in mind. So from this we also understand that Sealand is a developed economy, which means people have the interest and the money to spend on innovative and health-oriented products such as protein supplements. Also the trend and culture will be such that people are used to these kinds of products. But still, segmentation, external market analysis will be important here, which is your E1 syllabus again. Because knowing your external market, knowing about changes in the external market, opportunities in the external market, is not possible till you have an active external market analysis or which segments to focus on. Like right now you are focusing on the segment of regular exercises. But what if you want to expand to a larger customer base? So all of this is important and these topics are from your E1 syllabus. Carrying on. Personal Best was founded five years ago by Julia Matthews. So it's kind of a startup. It's kind of a business in its early stages. So it was founded five years ago by Julia Matthews, Penny Sanchez and Hema Bhatt. The three founders were all members of the same gym where they attended the same bodybuilding sessions several times each week. Now think over here that it's only founded five years ago. But for any business to survive for five years naturally means that it has some kind of goodwill. It has some kind of customers who like their products. So a business can only and only survive in its introduction stage, in its growth phase, early growth phase, because it has garnered a set of loyal customers and a growing brand image, all of which amount to increasing goodwill. So very clearly we know that we have survived in the market because something you have done right. And this information that I'm giving you, firstly, is helping you understand our company. Yes. But second, I'm giving you these text boxes so that you can use this information when you go to mock question writing. For example, if you've gone through the pre-scene multiple times, if you've heard my explanations multiple times, then you know that, okay, business is five years old only, but a business can only survive for five years if it has garnered a set of loyal customers. So when you are writing any answer in the exam or in my mock questions as well, you can start your answer or end your answer by saying that, okay, uh, we have been in the market for five years, but we have, uh, you know, taken over or we have survived in the introduction or growth phase, which is a very good standing or reputation that our business has. And then you write whatever you have to. But if you start your answer in this way or you end your answer in this way, just using this somewhere, 
it tells the examiner that okay this student has gone through the pre scene this student knows our company it adds integration to your answer it adds business acumen to your answer so don't just you know go through the pre scene for the sake of it take valuable insights from it which you can use then to write a good answer and that is why i am going through the pre scene so slowly part by part with you following a particularly grueling group session the three founders debated what their ideal post workout snack would be so like with any startup in the world it starts with an idea so these founders were debating what a post workout snack would be as all three had busy careers with limited free time convenience was high on the list of priorities and they decided unanimously that an individually wrapped snack bar would be best so the whole idea behind creating this snack bar was that they had limited time and they wanted convenience and they wanted something healthy so as we know from the industry analysis again these are the driving factors of this industry where convenience limited time is what people are look you know battling with all the time this is also an opportunity to further diversify into the rtd industry if you if you've gone through the industry analysis you will know i'm talking about the ready to drink protein supplements so like a ready individually snap uh, you know wrapped snack bar same way as of now we are only selling protein powders and protein bars which we know so another opportunity for our company could be to enter the rtd ready to drink protein supplement market because it's also for people who want convenience ease you know all of the factors which personal best is currently catering to so something to keep in mind as an opportunity which you can mention when the right time comes in a mock question or if they're asking you for expansion ideas or anything like that but again throughout the pre scene i'll keep giving you relevant ideas like this now all three concurred that the snack had to be high protein and should contain no added sugar because it had to satiate and not spike blood sugar levels so high protein was the focus the gym manager overheard the conversation and argued that the perfect snack was already for sale in the gym's cafe in the form of the wdw high protein snack bar so the gym founder uh, so the gym manager sorry uh, guided them towards an already available another company's snack bar the three founders then added a further prerequisite it also had to taste good so the current protein bars which these three founders were uh, exposed to was not tasting good so all of this combined personal best was born they wanted something convenient healthy high protein and should taste good these are the four prerequisites for these three founders and with these ideas personal best was born over the next few months the founders experimented with diverse types and combination of ingredients in their attempt to create their best protein bar so they started their experimentation combining ingredients spending hours to create the best protein bar working in julia's own domestic kitchen they selected and mixed the ingredients and then rolled the dough until they produced a 60 gram protein bar which included 22 grams of protein 14 grams of fiber less than a gram of sugar and total was 198 calories it tasted fabulous so what do we learn from this it was a small operation started in julia's own domestic kitchen where the founders themselves were rolling the protein bars were mixing the ingredients and you know it clicked and a protein bar which was 60 grams in total 198 calories was born and it tasted fabulous 
the three founders replicated this feat to create 10 amazing different flavored bars. So now they had 10 different flavored bars. So what, what is the major characteristics of our company up until now? Homegrown credentials, quality commitment, along with superior taste are the factors that have generated comparative advantage for us when the business started. So convinced that they had a successful product on their hands, the founders approached several manufacturing companies with a view to outsource production. Naturally, they didn't have any factory or anything. They were making it in Julia's house. How long were they going to make it in Julia's house? And how will they reach a certain level if you just keep making stuff in house? So they started, uh, you know, approaching manufacturing companies with a view to outsourcing this production. So outsourcing is in my E1 syllabus. I will make a very quick analysis where I will think about advantages of outsourcing where you can control costs, you can have experts do that same job, you can focus on other parts of the business and disadvantages such as service issues, delivery issues, confidentiality issues, your recipes may get leaked. So keep a very, uh, I made a very quick analysis. So keep in mind the advantages and the disadvantages of outsourcing, which our business has looked at at the very beginning. And this is part of our E1 syllabus. They were turned down by all of them. So when you went out with this outsourcing request, you were turned down by all. Trusting that their instinct was correct and that the protein bar would be a success the founders remortgaged their homes and invested their life savings in setting up a small manufacturing plant. So you have your own small manufacturing plant, which you set up by your own money, which means the own founders money. So we have a small setup, a small production facility, meaning we are reliant on one production unit to run all the production functions. Right now you are a small organization, so this makes sense. But we will start to think about the benefits and limitations of having one single centralized unit. Everything happening under one roof, one machine, one manufacturing setup. And because you are a small organization, it makes sense. But can this site continue to meet the demand as we grow? That's the question you ask. So when we make any production related decisions, it is important that you keep in mind that right now you have a small setup, which we will detail upon as we go deeper into the pre-scene. But any decision that you are making, production relation related mainly, you always consider relevant costs. So what are the relevant costs? This is part of your P1 syllabus. The concept of relevant costing is often tested in the exam and it's part of your P1 syllabus. That is why I'm bringing it up for you. Both Julia and Hema quit their jobs to work full time at Personal Best and in the early days worked 18 hours a day sourcing suppliers, taking orders, unloading deliveries, manufacturing the bars, packing and distributing the bars. So they did pretty much everything and they worked 18 hours a day. So we can fall into the category of a startup business and startups are founded by one or more entrepreneurs who want to develop a product or service for which they believe has demand. Julia and Hema quit their jobs and invested all their time and effort looking at all parts of the business. They're also telling us that Penny has great marketing experience and all three founders have used their experience and stuck to their gut. And in the end, they form the backbone of this company. Without these three founders, the company is nothing because they have given birth to the company. They have set the pattern, the structure, everything about the company they have started from the beginning. 
So Penny, while continuing in her employment as a marketing executive, managed to plan and execute a near perfect marketing campaign using social media to raise awareness and create demand for the protein bars. So this is something that Penny used because of her marketing background. She was innovative and in time marketing techniques have been used which are vital for consumer good products specifically like protein bars if nobody knows the benefit of your protein bar if you've not marketed your protein bar no matter how good it is nobody will buy it so this brings in the topics of new types of marketing marketing planning process new types of pricing so marketing based pricing techniques part of p1 new types of marketing marketing planning processes part of e1 becomes important because of the nature of your product nature of your industry so every all of these topics that i'm pointing out i recommend that you have a piece of paper next to you or a word file open where you are writing down these topics so these are the bare minimum topics that you revise bare minimum topics that you keep in mind from e1 p1 and f1 so within weeks of the formal product launch pb was an outstanding success a gap in the market had just been filled which means there were no protein bars with this with this amount of protein and which tasted so good so a gap in the market was filled it would only have been possible because of a good marketing campaign good external analysis both we have spoken about many social media influencers with perfectly toned gym bodies praised the delicious flavors and posted image after image of themselves holding pb bars following the launch several innovative fans of pb protein bars began to post recipes on social media for various desserts made using the pb bars so social media is really helping or really helped our business because you know once social media influencers and lots of fans start posting a lot of things about a product there is inherent demand because people want to try it out videos of how to make cheesecake warm fudge cake and pancakes with melted pb bars were constantly shared and linked on social media the first pb protein bars were offered for sale at the at the chain of gyms where the idea was first conceived and within a short time other gym chains contacted the founders as their customers were asking them to stock the products so your first point of sale was chain of gyms so relationship management with a gym network will be very important because the more better you have a relationship with different chain of gyms with different gyms all over your country the more demand will generate right so relationship management very important and these gyms become part of your stakeholder group and managing stakeholders is very important so relationship management stakeholder management part of your e1 syllabus is very important to cover same way growth in the first year of trading was so rapid that new premises and additional plant and machinery had to be acquired in order to keep up with demand so addition of new premises and property plant and equipment brings in your concept of ias 16 along with revaluation of assets f1 syllabus they can very easily ask you a question that we are again looking at new premises or a new plant and machinery what costs will be capitalized as part of ias 16 and what will be not so your knowledge of f1 is very important here and because you are growing fast growth can lead to capacity management issues p1 syllabus it can lead to costing issues p1 syllabus it can lead to purchasing storing related issues which can cause variances so your variances p1 syllabus 
you are expanding so it can cost work cost uh, or cause working capital issues because cash will be tied up in new premises plant machinery so there can be working capital issues straight from your f1 syllabus now all of this i straight away picked up because they said that we are expanding and when you are expanding all of these issues are inherent all of these issues occur and all of these issues are ones which can affect a business so can there be a strategic change again to leasing rather than purchasing as we grow so your ifrs 16 comes into the picture this is your f1 syllabus over here so they can say up until now you were buying the machinery but now you are leasing the machinery how do we record it that is something that they can ask you right so uh, your fundamentals of ifrs 16 f1 syllabus are important to revise now in the first year of trading itself the range of protein bars increased to 16 flavors and in the second year of trading six additional flavors were offered as limited editions so in the first year itself remember we started with 10 flavors but in the first year itself the range of protein bars became 16 in the second year another six were offered as limited edition but these were limited so you have 16 full time flavors in the second year limited edition six more flavors were added and all of these were tested for no charge by selected influencers so our major marketing is around social media influencers and that has been the trajectory so keep this in mind as a marketing suggestion as the business moves forward so for a business growing rapidly we must ensure that the structure or the culture is well set to make sure there are no apprehensions about the business's goals a good organizational structure along with flow of information would be important for us especially in an ever growing ever changing market scenario like today's modern business environment and this is part of your again organizational structure different organizational structures is part of your e1 syllabus which we are going to deal with as we go as we go deeper into the pre scene and we see the actual structure the actual directors of the organization so initial focus is on protein bars only eight protein bars to start with plus eight introduced in the first year itself six additional flavors also introduced so if you look at your total for two years you started with 10 flavors you added another uh, as we can see it increased to 16 so we added another six and then we added another six so overall in the first two years itself 16 flavors plus six limited addition flavors were offered so 22 flavors at the end of year 2 on protein bars only so the company is growing at a rapid pace and so management of the company and having good control over costs or decision making will be key also in the second year of trading penny who was who now also worked full time at pb relaunched the basic website and a distribution team was recruited so as the business grew new launch of a website plus a new distribution team so in the first two years itself lots of capital investments and changes to the business can be seen so when you are making so many changes so much investment risk related decision making will become important and these are important topics which are tested in the exam they can ask you that okay we are choosing a new distribution channel these are the costs related to the distribution channel and we have created an expected value table or expected cost table which according to you according to our risk attitude should be chosen 
so you will have to use your knowledge of the different risk criteria what standard deviation means what ev means what your different risk related decision making criteria are you'll have to know that which is clearly in your p1 syllabus so risk related decision making becomes also important here and they are telling you that you have a website so website management now will be key for any modern business because we know how much our business is influenced by social media by an online presence so website management will be very important and this brings in your e1 syllabus of you know data management digital costing big data data analysis and as we move further there could be an a mobile application also which is launched so app management digital costing these become very very realistic topics because of the mention of a new website being launched now overall you'll see you have 16 plus 6 22 different flavors at the end of year 2 so lots of different products with different prices with different specifications with different inclusions because every single protein bar has a different flavor different mix so this shows that our business has many different products and when different products are being sold activity based costing is often suggested so as we move ahead in the pre scene and as we go to the costing cost structures budgeting structures we'll give you a stronger opinion on the costing systems but at the onset itself this is very evident so activity based costing is an exam favorite topic is an important topic from your p1 syllabus again i have already discussed it with you so online sales especially for our products have many advantages now in my industry analysis it was very clear that the online segment is fast growing and it has a very large market share because people want to buy protein bars protein shakes protein powders conveniently easily which the online sales channel provides so this will generate huge volumes of customer geographic and personal data because you have lots of customers you who are buying your product so they will come to your website now how we are managing that data and using it to our own benefit will be of importance this brings in again your e1 concepts of big data machine learning ai data analytics how are you using all of this data which is being generated on your website just you are you, you set up the website no people are buying from your website so how are you using it big data data analytics comes into the picture here during the third year of trading the founders introduced a new product which is protein powder so in the third year protein powder was introduced this product was also an outstanding success a protein powder that transformed into a smooth creamy delicious shake when water was added seemed too good to be true to the tens of thousands of pbs devotees so by the third year itself we had tens of thousands of customers and again when we launched this new product at the center was convenience good taste as well so the founders of the company are innovative and are ready to push the envelope this is important in today's dis- dynamic business environment so this tells us about the minds of our directors they are not just sitting on the success of protein uh, bars they launched a new product they took a risk for protein powder so brand management developing a brand in any of these businesses is very very important pb's revenue has continued to grow rapidly so fast growth remember problems that come with fast growth at each stage of growth the founders found the time and energy to recruit like minded innovative and enthusiastic staff and it was felt growth was driven by the company's entrepreneurial culture which is in your e1 syllabus where 2 3 4 entrepreneurs start a business and they take 
all the major decisions they deal with all the major happenings within the company that's what's happening over here also right so new blood brings excitement and innovativeness to the company always good to consider good and bad of any change for a business as you grow it's good growth is good but it brings management related problems as well for example from the entrepreneurial structure you might have to transform to the functional structure and further to a divisional or a matrix structure as the business grows these are all ambiguities these are all problems which we could face due to growth this is part of your e1 syllabus again we'll talk about the structure of the company deeper into the pre scene but because the word entrepreneurial culture is mentioned over here i will i i have made a discussion on it right away and pb has experienced sales growth every month since its foundation the three founders all have their own specialities which enable them to work together in a remarkably smooth and collegiate manner which means they work together by common consent hema an engineer who managed and built the first production machinery is managing director julia is the finance director penny is the sales and marketing director because she has sales and marketing experience and when she launched the website when she launched the protein bar protein powder it has been a great success so in the year of 230th june 2023 the company's revenue was 23.9 million gross profit was 8.4 million and profit before tax was 1.2 million when we go to our financial analysis we'll be breaking down all the numbers and giving you the different profit before tax ratio and uh, gross profit ratio and all of that but right now from these numbers i see that we are a big company heading in only 5 years ago we have started and 24 million is my revenue so in a good situation the company will continue to grow so management of the company and having good control over costs decision making will be key because we are still in our growth stage it can be said it is natural that costs will be high which is reflected in a relatively lower profit before tax but as the business grows as you develop economies of scale you know the profit will become healthier but from this it's very clear that the that we are a big company growth in the right direction next is pb's mission statement and ethos the uh, pb's mission statement is to help all customers to achieve their own personal best and to live their best life it is this mission that guides most of the decisions at pb remember when a company sets a mission it's not for any reason uh, you know any it's not for no reason let me put it that way when you set a mission you have to live by it so for my company we want to help customers achieve their own personal best and to live their best life by giving them the best protein powders by giving them the best protein bars and this will at be at the center of the decisions that you make so going forward you can't suggest that let's come up with a protein bar that compromises on quality that's not the mission of your company so mission for any company means the reason for its existence you have to stay true to the mission true to the culture and you can use this when you start your answer for example you can say that our mission states that we want to help all customers achieve their personal best life so staying true to this we should launch a product that is good quality for example and then you can start to answer the question but when you include something like this from the pre scene in your answer it adds value so while explaining the pre scene i'm also giving you tips and tricks of how you can better write answers better write integrated answers so please take this on board all of this information if you use when you are writing answers 
organically it will add integration value business value to your answers so alongside the products themselves the website offers the vast pv community nutritional and fitness advice hosts support chat rooms offers prizes for the best recipe using pv's snack bars or protein powder every month and has links to other relevant websites so you have like a community page going on where uh, you know you are automatically marketing your product through hosting chat rooms giving prizes and all of that so a good customer base has already been created through our community how we we are storing this information yes but how are we using this information so huge opportunity for big data data security comes into the picture over here because technologies are driving the digital world this needs to be this is the concept from your e1 and p1 syllabus which you have to keep in mind you are storing all this information what are you doing of this information are you using it to generate sales are you using it for better customer service the founders are also concerned with sustainability very important which means being conscious aware about the environment and ensure that the ingredients used in production are ethically and sustainably sourced sustainability credentials very important this is our competitive advantage you can market around it and you must use it when you go to mock question writing from the early days of pv's existence where suppliers were begged and charmed into offering advantages credit terms relationship with suppliers is seen as vital to pv's success so now suppliers are a very integral and intricate part of my business relationship management and suppliers also become a very important stakeholder for you so a collaborative process has been followed and having such strong supplier relationships could help us explore modern manufacturing techniques like jit and this would further strengthen our working capital cash position because you are not storing uh, raw material you are not uh, wasting any time you are not storing your final products it's just in time coming in going into production straight away going into your distribution channel so this jit is possible only when when there are strong supplier relationships they're telling us that you already have strong supplier relationships it's seen as very important so there is an option for jit which we'll again explore when we go deeper to the processes of our company when we go deeper into the production process of our company but it's a possibility it can be seen over here that is why i have mentioned it so jit p1 working capital f1 i am pointing out these important areas again the company has aimed to be carbon neutral within 4 years and is continually striving to improve its supply chain manufacturing process and outward logistics to get closer to this so sustainability credentials but we have gone one step further and said that i want to be carbon neutral now so this will again have to be at the center of our strategies this means we are looking at new developments innovations in our business because you want to be carbon neutral you will have to do something different so modern manufacturing techniques will have to be looked at and this becomes my vision then which i want to achieve in the future so mission is what you are doing right now vision is what you want to achieve in the future which is become carbon neutral for example in the first few months of production peanut butter was sourced from suppliers that imported from south america in 2018 pv began sourcing raw peanuts from a grower in europe and now roasts and grinds these in house to make its own peanut butter so first you are importing it 
but then because of your sustainability credentials and because you wanted to not affect the environment hugely and also because you want to control quality you started making in house so processes are being brought in house to maintain quality again showcases our quality credentials and sustainability credentials so what did we learn in the ethos of our business let's make a quick quick recap your mission is to help customers achieve their own personal best life you have a vast community your credentials are of sustainability and you want to use ethically and sustainability sourced raw material you have good relation with suppliers and you see it as very important you want to become carbon neutral within the next 4 years these remain at the center of my business decision making because these are my ethos and you should use them should keep them in mind when you go to mock question writing now that has got me to the end of this very quick part 1 of our pre scene analysis we have part 2 and part 3 available which will come up if you choose to sign up with us part 2 is the major so part 1 was the introduction part 2 is going to be the major processes of the company and part 3 is going to be a financial analysis all together we give you the pre seen in two forms one is a pdf which you can read like you saw on your screen and one is a video where i explain one by one by one part to you so you don't miss out on anything as you can see it's very well curated it's something which we have curated with a lot of time and effort and you can see the benefit that it derives if you follow a comprehensive course like this now we have uh, you know you can visit our ocs page fintutors.com/ocs you can visit my website and then from the courses option choose the ocs page and sign up to maybe the on demand course or the full course whatever works best for you you'll get access to our full material including the study notes mock questions pre seen analysis you can also write to us on help at the rate fintutors.com and somebody from the team will provide you all the details and sign up help if that's what you need but this was part of the pre seen i hope you have found it helpful thank you